Here. Uh, Jack Ward, Blessed Baptist Church. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. I'm glad they get into this. Yes. Amen. <laughs> yeah. Okay, right here. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Okay, next one. Praise, thank you again for coming. Good to have you. Yes, sir. Amen. Farmersburg. Yes, sir. Yes. Thank you for coming from Millgrove. Good to have you guys. Up here. Oh, right here. Yes. Yes. Amen. There's a loud churches. Yes. Amen. Thank you for coming from Good Hope as well. Yes, sir. This is Pastor John from Crossroads Baptist Church and South Arlington, Indianapolis. Amen. Appreciate you guys. Yes, sir. Right. Amen. They teach them how to scream over there. Okay. Good. Thank you guys for coming. I know it's a long trip for some of you. Appreciate you guys coming. Let's do this. Uh, let's do another ticket. Let's do that real quick. We'll do another ticket here. We'll do a couple tickets here just real quick. And then we're going to go to a song. How about 641465? Right here. Caleb, go over there. Get a watch him call it for me. Here we go. Next ticket. 641568. 568. Come on up. Grab something from the table. Oh, it was somebody else's ticket? Okay. There's something going on there. 641511. Right here. 511. Last three. 511. Max trying to cheat over there. Come on up. That's it? Okay. All right, take out your songbooks. 533, the old-fashioned way. Uh, let's go back to the old-fashioned way, guys. Let's stand together. 533. They call me old-fashioned because I believe that the Bible is God's holy word. That Jesus who lived among men long ago is divine and the Christ of God. My sin was old-fashioned, my guilt was old-fashioned, God's love was old-fashioned, I know. And the way I was saved was the old-fashioned way through the blood that makes whiter than snow. Sing it on the last. Old-fashioned because I am looking above to Jesus my glorified Lord. Because I believe He is again fulfilling His holy word. My sin was old-fashioned, my guilt was old-fashioned, God's love was old-fashioned, I know. And the way I was saved was the old-fashioned way, through the blood that makes whiter than snow. Amen. Be seated. Have a seat there. Tell you what, let's do this. We did this at camp. I thought this was fun. And basically, we'll, whoever wins, we'll get to the end. You can pick up something from the table again. We'll do this coin flip game. So I guess you have to stand for this. I'm sorry. I'm going to have to stand back up again. So stand back up. So this is what we'll do. We'll do a coin flip. So this is heads, right? So, do the point. so this is heads. If you think it's heads, hands behind your back for tails. Okay? So heads, tails. So pick where you want it to be. Okay? Heads or tails. And then if you, if you don't win, you got to sit down. That's how it works. I'm not real good at flipping coins. I'm going to do the best I can. There's our first one here. Heads! If your tail, sit down. Heads or tails, pick your, pick your choice. Where you want it to be. Heads it is. Oh, this coin has heads on both sides. No. <laughs> That'd be worth a lot, brother. I'm not good at that. Tails. Ooh, we 
got rid of some people. Take your pick, heads or tails. I'm just gonna move it around a few times. Let's see here. Heads! Did I lose a few people? Okay. Heads it is. We got a lot of heads going on here. What's the deal? Well, that was a good flip, maybe. It's on the floor. Pick it up. I'm not looking on my hand. Heads again. I ain't even thinking it'd be heads over and over again, right? Okay, how many we got here? We got a couple? All right, heads or tails? Take your pick. Heads it is. Got three left? All right, heads or tails? There's got to be at least one different in the group. Heads or tails, right? You got your pick? Got to be one different. One, somebody's got to be tails. Okay, there we go. Tails it is. Get some. Everybody's back in again. Stand up. You're back in. Heads or tails? Here we go. Take your pick. Here we go. I gotta learn how to flip a coin. Tails! I ruined everyone. All with a flip of a coin. I can make you sit. That's pretty cool. Here we go. Heads or tails? You got it? Tails. Oh, we got some more people. Heads or tails, you got it? Tails. I really am flipping it. I really am. All right, we got what? One, two, three, four, five, six, something like that. Heads or tails? Oh, wait, we're all at tails. We're, somebody's got to pick a different one just in case. Okay, there we go. I like that quietness, you know, just before. Heads! We got a winner. Come on. Come on up. Just go one more time. Everybody stand up. One more time. Everybody stand up. Got a winner here. You trying to keep your hair down? Heads or tails? Here we go. Let's flip it around. Anything from the table over there? First one is heads. Has anybody gone more than one round at least? I guess somebody, somebody, most people have. Okay, here we go. Heads or tails, take your pick. Heads. Okay. Got some people still. Heads or tails, make your pick. Make your pick. Heads or tails, make your pick. Tails. <laughs> Heads or tails, make your pick. Heads. Got three left. Heads or tails, make your pick. Heads. You guys win. Come on up. You guys can win. Come on up. You guys got it. Very good. Okay, our last game will be empty your pockets game. What do you call this thing? Scavenger hunt? You call it show me? Pass it up. Brother Mike, come on up. If he's going to do that for us. We got some things. You got to bring it on up. I don't know what to call this game. Tell you what. Pastor, can you keep score in the back? Whichever side wins gets to go downstairs to eat first. You get first in line for walking tacos, which are in a boat. So I guess they're walking tacos in a boat. All right, first person, you got to bring it up here. The first person to hand it, Brother Mike, we can figure out who wins. You got it? All right, my first item is what I always carry with me, Swiss Army knife. Which, which one first? Over here? This side? Maybe in the middle? Mike, you could be the protector here. Now, Mike could perhaps keep this one. A $20 bill. This side. Next item. A hairbrush. You can't throw it. you got to bring it up. Or you can pass it up. But don't throw it. 
This side. Okay, so here's, I don't know if we can get this one out. So you got to, I don't know if you can find someone. I'm, I'm hoping this will work. A driver's license, but not from Indiana. How could, do we have that possibility? Driver's license, but not from Indiana. Okay, it worked. Right this side. Good job. He's taking someone else's license right now. Okay, any piece of candy. We got some candy. This side. Okay, I need a not used Band-Aid. You had that ready. Okay, I'm going to do it this way. What's in your wallet? Capital One card. Does anybody have a Capital One card? <laughs> the churches need to get along. Okay, here we go. Exact change. I need 17 cents. It's got to be exactly 17. Decide. Okay, how about uh, any business card? Side. <laughs> Six to three. Okay. How about a? And it can be on something, but I need a sticker. Anything? It could be on something. A sticker. Is it a sticker? I need hand sanitizer. <laughs> Which one got it, Mike? Right here. Right here. I wasn't picking. Okay, I hope this doesn't come from a guy. Ladies, help me out with this one. Nail polish. Brings out your eyes, man. I always carry with me chapstick. Go this side. Okay, I need any coupon. Any kind of coupon. Is that a coupon? All right, we're going to do double points for this one, Pastor. Double points. Does anybody have a triple A battery? Does anybody else think this is weird? Okay, it has to be off your foot, a Nike shoe. That was not double points, no. Okay, this one. Okay, any store membership card. Got a membership card? Just one is good. Okay, I can tell by the look of this group. We need some drugs. Any pain reliever medication? Pain reliever. Got some pain reliever. By the way, I could take some of that. <laughs> okay, you ready? It's got, it's got to be off the wrist. I need a smartwatch. A smartwatch. Right here, this side. Okay, Pastor Hadley, if you have this too, I'm just leaving. I can't handle this. A stapler. <laughs> Does anybody have a stapler? You know those little small ones? Hey, nobody had that one. Okay. 
Okay, paper clip. Oh, wait, wait, wait. We got a stapler. This team carries everything with them. How about a paper clip? A whole box of paper clips. This side. How about a cough drop? This side. Now, if you have a Swiss Army knife, you have this on there, tweezers. Do I have any tweezers? Yep, he's got it. This side. All right, just a few more. How about a pink highlighter? We got a pink one? So close, so close. Okay, how about eye drops? Any eye drops? I guess you guys cry enough. No eye drops. Okay, here's an easier one, a red pin. Got this side. Okay, how about a uh, flash drive, memory stick? Anybody have one of those? Nobody has one of those? You forgot to bring it, the memory stick, right? All right, so, so I'm going to advertise. Let's go places. Do you have a Toyota car key? Toyota car key? Uh, okay, so I need, this might be a little tough, cannot be on your cell phone, okay, so not on your cell phone. A picture of you and your family. Do you have a picture of you and your family? Is he in there? Our same thing, not on your phone. Do you have a calculator? Do we have a calculator? There's one on your watch. Pastor has one on his watch. <laughs> Okay, so, oh, you got it? Yeah, it can't be on the phone. That can be a phone. It can't be an actual calculator. Okay, how about, we'll count it. Yeah, we'll count it, because it wasn't on the phone. It wasn't on the phone. All right, so your KJV Bible turned to John 3.16. Bring it up. It's got to be in his hand on John 3.16. This side. And then uh, something Brother Mike uses often is a hair tie. Yes, please. Hair tie. You got one? Right this side. And then one more, the last one. Anybody have a 3 by 5 card? Yeah. Got through it right here. All right, what's our final score, Pastor? How did we do? Was it close? 15. 12. Whoa, 15 this side. It was really close. Good job. <laughs> it's that Green County math. <laughs> right. All right, take your hymn books one last time. Turn to 862. 862. Let's stand one last time. We'll do the chorus of My Desire. 862. My desire to be like Jesus. My desire to be like Him. His Spirit fill me. His love overwhelm me in deed and word to be like Him. How many of that's your first time singing that before? Any first time singing? Let's sing it one more time. Let's do it without the instruments. You'll start us off. Let's sing it. Let's sing our voices out. Sing as a prayer to the Lord. Here we go. My desire to be like Jesus. My desire to be like Him. His
to be like him. Amen. Young people, I pray that's your desire. You may have a seat to be like our Savior. I tell you what, guys, I am excited. You guys can have a seat for just a moment. We'll have you up in just a moment. You guys don't have to keep standing up. Introduce our speaker tonight. We've been praying and, and planning this for, wow, Brother Randy, <laughs> a couple of years, I guess, at least, uh, thinking about how to get uh, my former youth pastor here. And so I grew up, well, I guess the debate is out about that phrase. I grew up, <laughs> okay. But uh, years ago, I, I, I lived in uh, Virginia at a church called Gilgrove Baptist Church. Pastor there was Pastor John Brothers. Called him Brother Brothers. That's kind of neat, right? And uh, Brother Randy Yeomans was my youth pastor going up for a few years in my high school days. And, I, and I'll tell you that the uh, Lord put him there for me. I believe that. Um, the Lord just taught me so much through this man and his wisdom. And we were talking a little bit. We had him over for dinner last night. And we were talking about one of the first youth activities that we what, that he did. I think the first one there, right? The volleyball one. And uh, he had, in the back area of the church property, he had roughed up the, the dirt quite a bit, brought the volunteer fire department to make mud. We played mud volleyball. Okay. Yeah. And uh, we just had a great time and just appreciate him. He, we, we lived not too far from each other. He would pick me up, take me to church for different things. We had teen time. You know, young young people, the youth leader that you have, I hope that you respect that youth leader and uh, whoever that youth pastor is, that youth director, that, that leader that helps you. They put a lot of effort into you and that's the reason we do these youth rallies to try to give you a charge. There's so much temptation out in the world today and having good godly friendships, being in these kinds of places is such a key part of your life and that's that's what we just sang about your desire, being to pre please the Lord. So he's, he currently now uh, is the youth pastor, uh, athletic director there at Liberty Baptist Church in Durham North Carolina has been doing that for what 27 years right 27 years Miss Shelley his wife is here with him uh, teaching there in the school they've been doing that for the most part that time brother Randy also uh, teaches a Bible class as well as and he'll probably tell you some things uh, about his ministry but I'm so glad uh, that he was able to be here this weekend over a 10-hour drive uh, to be here for this youth rally and so I'm just excited about the opportunity to introduce uh, my youth pastor and uh, so he'll say some things about that we're also thankful that our young people are learning to say and they like to participate in different things, and so they're going to come at this time. Do we need the microphones on? Are they on? They're all good? Okay. So you guys can come, and then as soon as they're done, Brother Randy, you can come on up and also handle the invitation. That'd be great. You guys can come on up.
ne- if you are a teenager and you've never sang in front of people, you'll appreciate that, amen? And your turn rolls around. Well, it's a pleasure to be here today. And uh, if Jamie is looking old, then I must be really old. If I was his youth pastor 27 years ago, I got to be Jamie's youth. Who said that? Wow. I'll actually be, I'll be 60 years old next year. Yeah. Can you believe that? Short people always look younger. And we get and we also eat on Happy Meals. Amen. Amen. Who's short in the back? That's right. Brother Jamie, the pastor. One of the things I was excited about coming to this meeting was missing my own church. No. One of the things I was excited, excited about was I knew that this pulpit was going to be smaller. Let's go. I knew this pulpit was going to be smaller. Now, these people are all taller than I am. You know what I'm saying? But I knew it was going to be smaller. Whew. Pastor Scott Gray is my pastor. How many of you ever heard Brother Scott Gray preach before? Yes. If you went to Hiles Anderson College, you probably had him as a teacher there for a while. Uh, of course, he's from uh, Longview, Texas. He's been an evangelist. He's been in our church for nine years. And uh, I've had the joy of being there for 27 and only having two pastors. You know, our church is 100 years old this year. And uh, for two, a quarter of a century plus two, I've been the youth pastor. You know, so I've, I'm married and buried. A lot of people, amen, been there for a while. But it is a joy. That sounds bad, doesn't it? And I saw some. I saw some. What? But the only problem, the bad thing about it, I might be next. I'm already married, so I'm left with the berry, right? Exactly. Hey, I love that pass it up game. We had a ladies meeting one time at our church with over 800 ladies. I was in the minority. But we had over 800 ladies and I was doing the game. I'm standing up here like Jamie. And I said, I need a lotto ticket. I thought nobody will bring me a lottery ticket. Boom, man, here they come. Ma'am, if you win, please tie the Liberty Baptist Church. Amen. If you win the lottery. I said one of the things was I need a set of false teeth. You ever seen a partial? You know what that is? It's kind of like maybe just the fangs or something. I don't know. But uh, here comes this woman. (laughs) You know, hey, here we go. Did I win? You know, yeah, you won. Keep it. You can have that. All right. With teenagers, I'm surprised you didn't say this. Are you ready? A toenail. Now, if we were at junior camp, I would put that toenail away. Oh, you turn off your phone. Okay. I was like, man, this, this is the guy who had everything, right? I need a Black & Decker drill. Here we go. I got this. All right, I need a 12 I need a 12 gauge. There he is, okay? He is a youth pastor, so he's got to have one somewhere. Amen? And uh, so, uh, t- a toenail, that's nasty. But if we were at junior camp, it'd be like this. I'll give you 500 points if you'll eat that toenail. <laughs> How many of you run junior camps? You know, they're crazy, man. I love that. We've run junior camp for like 18 years. Um, uh, little League sports at our church. I'm, I'm retiring from those kind of things. I just retired this year as the athletic director. I still coach girls volleyball. Anybody play volleyball? All right. Or I think you play volleyball? Somebody's like, maybe. All right. Round ball, net, you know what I'm saying. 30, 30 by 60 court, that kind of thing. Very good, very good. You know, I appreciate the opportunity to be here. I've looked at some of the people that you've had in the past and the people that you're going to have in the future. And uh, I, I'm here because I'm Jamie's youth pastor and the Lord has ordained that. You know, he was talking about, I think the Lord was preparing this. This is an, uh, a crossroads that the Lord has prepared 30 some years ago. You know, it was no, I, I actually was a, a a teenager like Jamie in the same community, Chesterfield County, Virginia. Uh, we did not attend Gilroy, Gilgrow Baptist Church until one day. I, I played public school sports, and and uh, my I told my mom, I said, Mom, uh, we were traveling all the way to Richmond, Virginia to go to church. I said, Mom, uh, hey, so and so wants me to spend the night over. We played ball, and then we're going to tra- we're going to travel and all that kind of stuff. We're going to get about late. She said, Son, you cannot spend the night anywhere unless you're going to go to church the next morning. Guess what? Gilgrow Baptist Church ran buses. I said, Mom, they got a bus. They're going to pick us up on a bus. And uh, so she said, okay, you can go. So I rode the bus to the very church that Jamie was attending. He wasn't attending back then. He might have only been one when I was attending. But uh, I went home that day and told my mom about uh, Gilgrove Baptist Church. And we went and visited. Pastor Brother Brothers came and visited our house. And we, uh, my parents started attending in like the 1977, probably the second year that Pastor Brothers was there. And uh, I went to Bible College, went to Hiles Anderson College, met my wife. She's downstairs they're serving right now. You know, Indiana's big to us. You know what I'm saying? I'm from North Carolina. Okay, amen. I'm a Duke uh, Blue Devils fan. 
I'm looking, I saw somebody move their head like that, but you're afraid to say something. Okay. Now, our, the, uh, Duke University is like 15 minutes, or I'm sorry, seven minutes from our church. Uh, the Tar Heels, boo. The Tar Heels are the faded blue. That's the faded blue. Okay. They are 20 minutes from our church. So our church is sort of a house divided, maybe. And uh, let's do this. Let's do this. How many of you are Michigan fans? Raise your hand. Yes, that's good. Three of you. Okay. How many of you are Hoosier fans? Two of you. We're, this is not Indiana? What in the world? Okay. I like Notre Dame. Anybody like Notre Dame up this way? Two of you. Okay. What are, Kentucky Wildcats. Does anybody not care about college sports? Okay, that's the majority. College football starts today. How many of you knew that? Yes. I'll be watching it at the hotel tonight. Amen. And uh, so forth. But uh, how many, let's do this. How many of you went to, how many of you attend a Christian school? Okay. How many of you go to public school? How many of you skip school? <laughs> yeah, I can tell. Okay. How many of you are homeschooled? Raise your hand. You guys, you guys cheat, man. You guys are cheaters, man. You get up, do what you want to do. Y'all, you know, whatever the case may be. You got that Rebecca program. You think you'll show up in Pensacola and be it, you know, because you watch that guy on the video the whole time. You know, I said, y'all are cheaters. You know what I'm saying? Some of us got to go eight to four. You know, we got to do all that mess. Can I get a witness right there? Okay, if you go to Christian school, boo the homeschoolers. You're scared. If you go to homeschoolers, tell them they're jealous. Yeah, that's right. Amen. I get to stay with mommy all day long. This is awesome. I get to go to the refrigerator. You know. Man, I tell you what. Remember during COVID, we were watching our churches on television. That was like the craziest thing to me. <laughs> Pastor was preaching. I actually had to go to the restroom. I was like, there's the bathroom. <laughs> I never, I don't ever go to the bathroom during sermons. Amen. I'm like, hey, I went to the restroom. I think like, while I'm here, I'll go to the refrigerator. <laughs> Man, this is great. I love this. Diet Coke, you know, come back. Hey, baby, what did he say? Hey, turn it off. I'm in the kitchen. You know what I'm saying? That was awesome until the preacher goes, did you watch my sermon? Uh, I watched it. I'm not sure if I heard it, but I watched it. Amen. Good times. Hey, I hated that mess, didn't y'all? Yeah. Man, I'm so glad to be back in church. Somebody yeah. say amen. Hey, you know, you know, the Bible is filled with one another's. We didn't have that inside the house, did we? I had my wife. Yeah, but I'm talking about one another. We can't connect. We can't help each other if we don't have the one another. And by the way, I don't think any time again will somebody in America tell us we can't go to church. We all learned something during that COVID thing, didn't we? We're going to keep going to church until the army army's out there and then we're going to say, Bella's, fellas, we're praying for you. But we're going to meet right here now. We're going to meet outside. How many of you did parking lot services? Raise your hand. We did about everything that you could think of. In my Sunday school class, I, I don't even know how to operate stuff. And somebody just tell me, start talking, Brother Randy. And I start looking at the thing. Hey, guys, how are you? I'm looking on an iPad. Hey, good to see you. You know what I'm saying? We played all kinds of Zoom games. We did everything possible to keep the kids engaged. Uh, Bible stuff all the time. It was yucky. I just not. I did not like it. We, you don't have all of this. Crowd noise, push button. Song, let's play it from the past. It's not fun, right? Not fun at all. Aren't you glad you're in church today? Somebody say amen. You are an awesome crowd. I've been watching you. Most of you were participating. I mean, having a good time. I saw one guy get this one girl's signature five times. That was not the purpose of the game, by the way. Can I have your signature and your phone number? You know what I'm saying? I see how that works right now. And you're like, psycho, sicko. Take your Bibles this morning or this afternoon and turn to Psalm 23, if you would. Psalm 23. Most of us, when we think of Psalm 23, and we've been in the ministry for quite some time, when do we normally hear Psalm 23 preached? Funerals, that's right. But you know, I don't have a, I really don't believe that it's something that we just need to break out for the funerals, amen? I don't believe so at all. I think it's an everyday thing that we need to be a part of. Well, don't we need what it said, what is said there in the 23rd Psalm? Let me read it to you. We'll have a word of prayer, and then we'll jump into the message because I believe we got some walking tacos or some floating tacos or some kind of taco. And I just pray that some of y'all don't have a long ride home after you have your tacos. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> All right, let's look at the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I, I have this in parentheses right here, I walk through, praise God, I walk through, the valley of the shadow of death, will, I will fear no evil, 
for thou art with me. Amen. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Verse number 5 and verse number 6 is going to be where we're going to jump out today for our message this morning, or this afternoon. And I want you to look at it with me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let's pray. Father, we do love you and thank you. Uh, what a great crowd. What a wonderful assembly to this afternoon. And Lord, I thank you for their spirit. But Lord, we, we appreciate the gifts and we appreciate the games. And But Lord, we want to hear from you right now. I want to hear from you right now. And Lord, may the Holy Spirit speak through our hearts and may the we have holy unction, Lord, to give what you would have for us tonight. And I pray, Lord, that we would all go away different. We'd all go away making a commitment that we will stay at the table. We love you and thank you for all that you've done for us. In your name we pray. Amen. You know, I want you to notice something. If I was to title the message this evening, it, or this afternoon, it'd have to be something like this. The table is spread, or please don't leave your seat. Maybe somewhere in your Christian life right now, maybe it is a come back to the table, or come back to the seat. If you look at the passage of Scripture, verse number 5, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Okay? Thou, ha thou hast anointed my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. One day, Pastor uh, Brother Gray called me and says, Brother Randy, I need you to go talk to this lady to make sure that she's saved. And I'm like, yes, sir. Uh, what's the story? Well, she has cancer. She's 95 years old. And I said, okay, okay, all right. You know, there's a lot of pressure right there. Make sure somebody's 95 years old. Make sure they're saved. Amen. And so I go over there, and there's a couple people there. They said, hey, while you're here, we're going to step out and You'll be able to talk to uh, this the, the lady by yourself. And I opened the 23rd Psalm and began to explain to her that, ma'am, uh, this is what we normally sometimes hear during funeral times. But it's a great thing for today. Uh, maybe your cancer is that valley that you're walking through. Maybe maybe the fact that you're about to step into heaven and, and you're thinking about it. Well, I'm here today just to find out if you know about it. If you know Jesus Christ as your Savior. By the way, let me say this today. You'll never be able to sit at that table that's spoken of in verse number 5 where surely goodness and mercy are there if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior. Hey, let me tell you today, if you don't know Christ as your Savior, you're missing out because every day Jesus comes to prepare a table just for you. Amen. Hey, you don't want to miss out. That's like going to Dixie Stampede, buying a ticket, not eating the food. You know what I'm saying? You ever been to Dixie Stampede? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying, all right? Why well, go buy the ticket and hang out in the restroom the whole time? Okay? I hope today that if you know if you don't know Christ as your Savior, that you'll get saved. That you realize there is a seat prepared for you at that table. And goodness and mercy are following you all of your days. I began to talk to her and I, I began to read that passage of scripture as I was reading about the table. And I was and he says it's prepared. And before my enemies, there's a table prepared. I want you to try to envision this morning or this afternoon. I keep saying. I don't know why. Maybe it's North Carolina time. We're on the same time you are, but I'm not. Okay? If I could take this table... We were doing some giveaways at our youth conference. We gave away an Oculus. Does anybody know what that is? Yeah. Your jaw just fell down. We gave away a um, PS5. Is that what it is now? Wow. That's like $1,500, right? We sold three staff members. Okay? And uh, <laughs> something else. Uh, something else. I don't even know what these things are. But, but the, the, the kids tell me, the, preacher, the kids will love these kind of things. No pressure, Jamie. No pressure. Okay? What you might call it? PS5. <laughs> Which one do you want? Amen. <laughs> 1500 of those bad boys. You can sell those and get you a PS5, okay? I'm talking to the lady. But I want you to envision right now, as I was talking to her, the Lord explained this to me a little bit. I want you to envision right now a table. And at that table that's been spread just for you, I want you to understand something that every day, if you're a born-again Christian, you know Christ as your Savior, that you're seated at that table. You have a right to sit at that table, amen? And I want you to understand who's sitting at the table with you. The Bible tells us, surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. I want you to understand that sitting at that table right now is goodness and mercy. How many of you have ever experienced the goodness and the mercy of Jesus Christ? Raise your hand. Oh my goodness, just to be able to stand here and, and to be able to look. Every one of you that are youth pastors or work with teenagers, 2.7 is how long you last. I don't know how long you've been there, but 2.7 is how long you last. 
I don't know why I've been doing it for 30 some because I don't know how to do anything else I guess I really like teenagers I should really do it's not a stepping stone to go be a pastor somewhere you're not for me to become a pastor it's the will of God that determines if I'm going to become a pastor and apparently God doesn't want me to become a pastor I've noticed this there's two sides to the pastor's desk one where he sits the other where I sit okay the one I sit I get to tell him we got problems and then I walk away the one where he sits he's got to deal with the problems can I get a witness? Can I get a witness? Yeah, can I get a handheld? Ah, yeah! Hey, preacher, I got to tell you something. Oh, sorry, dude. What you going to do about it? What you going to do when they come for you? Yeah, that's right. What you going to do about it? That's right. Maybe that's the will of... Maybe God's been telling me to pass you, but I don't want to deal with it. Amen. I have no idea. Every day, you see that at the table. Man, goodness and mercy. Man, Jamie and I were talking last night. I'm sure that you pastors are in the room. Some of the teenagers here, too. You can tell story after story after story after story where goodness and mercy tapped you on the shoulder. They keep looking for you. They were running after you, the Bible tells us. But I want you to notice something else about that picture. Not only do you have the table that is spread just for you every day, every day. I'll prove that to you just a minute. They're seated at that table. You are. You're seated at that table. Last night I was so honored to sit at Jamie's table and I felt so privileged. Sitting there as the pastor, his wife, the wife's pa the pastor's wife, my wife, uh, children, two boys singing on the end. Jamie, what if we'd have never met? What if we'd have never met? Nothing to do with me, only God. Right. Yeah. What if we'd have never met? Right. Somebody tells me, Brother Randy, you're so old, you're, you, you just travel around and clip coupons. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That sounds really weird. I'm, I get free coffee, I, I go shopping at places where senior citizens get discounts. I mean, it's incredible now, amen? It's incredible. I love that. Okay? I get tired fast, I go to sleep, I sit down. Uh, you got a nice football game. I'm down, you know, whatever. Okay? Youth activity, is it over? Oh, okay, yeah. Get on the bus. All right? I want you to understand what. What a, what a privilege to sit there. But I want you to pick this up. Who is serving the table? Yep. Anybody know? Who's serving the table? Jesus himself. Right. The one point I want to get across to you this morning, because I have a tendency to believe that most of you kids travel from youth meeting to youth meeting. You're groupies. You hear, most, you hear so much preaching. No excuse. You hear so much preaching. You know, the Bible tells us that much is given, much is required. Okay? You've grown how many of you how many no, I'm not gonna ask you question. You've grown up in church. You've sinned in church. The only place you've ever been is church, amen. You know what I'm saying? You 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 hear you go from you're gonna hear some great preachers in the series that you do. You're one of the few people I know that y'all actually get together and y'all can have meetings together. Independent fundamental fun, independent fundamental Baptist churches that actually come together and have scheduled meetings annually at different locations. Are you kidding me? Wait a minute. They might leave your church and come to my church. Forget that garbage, man. The world's going to hell. The world's going to our Christian teenagers to be chewed up. We're worried about that. Praise God for you guys and your pastor. Thank God for your preacher. Okay? Jesus, Jesus is waiting at your table. I'm saying all to say this. Some of you are going to make a lot of decisions in the next few years. How many of you are freshmen? Raise your hand. How many of you are freshmen? Well, that means we're going to have a lot of kids. How many of you are sophomores? Yeah, or either a lot of young kids. How many juniors? Seniors? Eighth graders? I didn't mean to leave out the junior high. I'm so sorry. Seventh grade? Sixth grade? Fifth grade, you snuck in. No, just kidding. Okay, all right. In these, in these six or seven years, you're going to make tons of decisions. Okay? And in the sermon, it'll come out. But I want you to understand, no matter what happens to you, I want you to understand this point, that every day, if you know Jesus Christ as your Savior, you are sitting at that table. If you do not know Christ today, do not walk out of this room. Don't go get a floating taco. Don't do anything like that. Don't do anything like that. You make sure you get it right. If you, if you can't remember a place and a time and a situation where you acknowledged your sin and accepted Christ as your Savior, you need to find somebody today. Don't worry about your youth group. Your youth group wants you to be saved. Don't worry about the youth pastor thinks he wants you to be saved. Don't worry about the preacher. He wants you to be saved. Don't even worry about the Holy Spirit. They're begging. He's begging you to be saved. Right? If you're not, you need to get saved so you can get to that table. I want you to understand the fact that no matter what happens to you as you leave this room today, Jesus goes and prepares that table every day. Every 
day. Whether you're right with him or whether you're not right with him, whether you're in church or you're out of church, you're out of sin or you're in sin, every day your Lord and Savior is coming and preparing that table. I want you to think about the prodigal son in Luke chapter number 15. Did you think for one moment there was a day he was not thinking that the prodigal would return? Right, right. Come on. Yeah. I believe every day that man would wake up. He had two sons. The Bible tells us in Luke chapter 15. He had two sons. I believe every morning that guy would wake up and he would have that seat. Right there. Oh, don't sit there. That's where my son sits. He'd go to the window. He'd look. The table's prepared. I'm sure if the boy was to come down, you know how it was when he returned. He ran out there and hugged him and kissed him to protect him so the people wouldn't have stoned him for doing what he had done. The Bible tells us in verse number 17, when he came to himself, I want you to understand what he thought of when he came to himself. you got time to look at the verse. When he came to himself, he thought of the bread and the plenty that his father had. Where was the bread? <laughs> Where was the bread and the plenty? At his father's table. The Bible tells us. Hello. No. The Bible tells us. The Bible tells us in uh, Lamentations chapter number 3 verse 23. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new when every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Psalm 68 verse number 19 says, Blessed be the Lord who daily loadeth us up with benefits, even the God of our salvation. You saw that multiple times. I want to give you a couple of examples. Remember the Old Testament when God would put out the manna? Yeah. How much could they get in one day? Anybody remember? Kahoot. How much manna were they allowed to get in one day? Just enough for that day. Right. You want to know why? Because Jesus wanted them to come back to the what? The table. The table. Right? Mephibosheth. Anybody know anything about Mephibosheth? I think there's a song. Mephibosheth. Okay, anybody know? You know what? Yeah. Anybody know? What, what's, up, what's up about Mephibosheth? He was, what happened to him? Maul, maimed. Remember? He was dropped during the, when they were leaving because of the invasion, what was going on. When was it that he looked like everybody else? When was it that his sin was covered? When was it when he was like everybody else kin to the king? When was it when he was seated at the table? Was it not? How about, how about Genesis chapter number 3? It doesn't take, man, it doesn't take mankind very much, very much time to mess up everything. Thing. Amen. Yeah. We're really, hey, you got this, you got that, and boom, you did what? Okay. I want you to notice in Genesis chapter number three, I believe it's verse number eight, Jesus comes walking in the cool of the day. Does he already know that they have sinned? Yes or no? He sure does because God knows everything. And praise God for that. I used to be scared about that when I didn't have a, a good walk with the Lord. Now I'm glad he knows. God, you know all these people that are staring at me right now? Yes, I do. Wonderful. Wonderful. Watch them while I turn my back and go back to my Bible. Okay? But I want you to notice in the cool of the day when, when Jesus came. You know what he came to tell them? I'm still here. I am still preparing the table. It's amazing to me that when I get up from the table, and some of us are going to in the next so many years. Doesn't mean that we've lost our salvation, but what it means is we've been distracted. Well, we're going to get up from the table. May I say to you that when you get, boy, I wish I could show you this. When you get up to the table, the Bible tells us in verse number six that who's going to follow you? Goodness and mercy. Right? So if I'm leaving the table, I want you to realize something. Goodness and mercy are sitting there, and goodness and mercy say, excuse me, Savior, we'll be right back. We'll be right back. No matter far, no matter how far you go or what's going on in your world, there's never a door that goodness and mercy are not going to go through. There's never a situation that goodness and mercy are not going to be there. So you say, oh, the lost. Uh, uh, there's always, God always prepares a way of escape for you. Just look at it. Think about it. Every day, no matter what's going on, God is working the table. Jesus is waiting at your table. Goodness and mercy are waiting there to remind you and sometimes show you how to get back to the table of God's blessings. I want you to notice something. There are four things I want you to try to get across to you and use some illustrations and tell you some things that are at the table that I think you really enjoy having. Number one, I want you to notice this. Well, let me let me give this illustration. I uh, have twin daughters. They are 33 years old. Uh, one is in Gulfport, Mississippi. She's assistant. Uh, her husband's assistant pastor at uh, Faith Baptist Church there in Gulfport, Miss Mississippi. Pastor Carr is the pastor there. Uh, my other daughter works with me. She's my assistant volleyball coach. She teaches in our school all day long. Her husband is assistant 
assistant administrator in our school. He teaches as well, and he's the girls' soccer coach, okay? And uh, I have uh, twin daughters. The first four grandchildren were all boys. I'm thinking, oh, finally, right? One more, we got a basketball team. And what was it? It was a girl, okay? Bristol the Pistol. That's her name. Pink boots everywhere she goes, all right? That's her. She sees pink, she's on. Okay? If I had her here today and she was sitting right there, she'd be looking like, they call me Grandy. Randy with a G in front of it. That's good. Grandy. You got to come up with your own name when you come to Grandpa. I mean, everybody's got Grandpa. G Daddy. I mean, come up with something, you know. But, I, but I'll get, get you a name, but I'm Grandy. All right, here we go. And uh, if I had a purse, a pink purse from Five Below, does anybody know what Five Below is? Okay. I was going to ask y'all questions like, y'all ever heard of Chipotle? Yeah. I am so far from a Chipotle and a Starbucks right now. Is there Dunkin' Donuts in this community? Yes. I found some reju rejuvenate place. Got some coffee this morning. Had, they were praying. I walked in. <laughs> he stopped praying. I was like, hey, how are you? I like I'm calling. You know, you know, whatever. Okay. Man, this, this is crazy out here. I, I kind of like it, though. Uh, so, if, because uh, Durham and Chapel Hill, Chapel Hill ain't no thrill. I mean, it, they're liberal as dogs hind legs. Think about that one. Okay. All right. So, here we go. Bristol. Bristol. If I had a, if I had a pink purse with two, two quarters and I stuck them in the pink purse. And I showed her a $100 bill. All of you would be going, oh, 100, 100, 100, wouldn't you? Yes. Yeah, you would. Bristol would walk up. She, would, she didn't care anything about what you were saying. She'd walk up and grab that pink purse. And you'd be going, what? Let me ask you a question. When you get up and walk away from the table, why are you no different? Right. What? Yeah, right. What? Freedom. What? Yep. Aren't we so easily distracted? Right. Aren't we so easily hooked and reeled in? How many of your churches have changed in the last two or three years? Yep. Christendom is being laughed at. Right. But I want you to realize something. Jesus is still coming to the table. Nothing's changed with him. No, no words are changing in your book unless you've got a different book. Amen. you got the King James. It ain't changing. All right. You with me there? I want you to notice a couple things. Number one. Number one. Number one. Number one. We'll go fast. Number one. When I don't understand, don't leave your seat. I'll guarantee you right now, if I was asking you to bow your heads and close your eyes, there's some teenagers. You're going through some things right now. Something's going on in your home with your family, at your church, in your community. There are some things going on right now that you you just don't understand. Can I tell you tonight, uh, this afternoon, if you do not understand what's happening, may I please tell you, do not leave your seat. Because something, like the old radio show, something good is going to happen to you. Don't leave your seat. Let me remind you of the words stated in Job chapter 1, verse number 21. The Lord gave and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Don't leave your seat. This Sunday morning, I will not be in my Sunday school class. One of my teenagers who now works for us, he will be teaching my Sunday school class. And seated right there, we have our boys, our girls sit on one side, boys sit on the other side, the bus teenagers sit wherever, wherever I can get them to sit down. Okay, that's what I do. At 9.30, in the, 9.30 on Sunday morning, I have a combination class at 10.15, uh, driving kids, go to big church, that's what I call it. I now have 15 to 20 uh, inner city kids, uh, they go to, they were with me. And that's a lot of fun right there. I'm aging quickly. But hey, man, we're having a good time. Okay? But seated about right where you are, a blonde-headed girl. Hey, just like you. With blue eyes, just like you. Seated right about there. Her name is Brianna Jolly. Okay? I knew her father when he was in the youth group. When you've been somewhere 27, I could say, I knew your grandparents. You know what I'm saying? Okay? Brian Jolly, one of the, one of the most respectful teenagers that I had in the youth group. Very, very popular in the school and everything like that. Got at odds about, got out at odds at something. And uh, uh, stepped out of the school for a little while. And got into the party world. And had a relationship with a young lady. Uh, in fact, his dad, now one of my best friends and Brianna, like I said before is he, they have adopted her uh, his dad came by one night and said hey, just the Holy Spirit told him, check on your son check on your son, check on your son he comes into the house and Brian is sitting at the chair and there's some partying going on and he says to Brian, Brian, are you okay? are you okay? are you okay? and Brian says to, Brian says to dad, dad, dad yes I am, yes I am yes I am, I remember when my phone rang that afternoon and Brian had passed away because he'd overdosed in drugs, why 
while he was in his in the moment that he passed away his girlfriend was already pregnant with Brianna and not Brianna was already pregnant with Brianna so Brianna's mother is a drug addict and her she is born her dad is passed away I went to Indian Creek like many of you do camp I called them I didn't we went there I called them Brian had been there I got the record you know how to do the trifold to try whatever salvations uh, I get one student gets one and they keep one they they found the record where Brian had accepted Jesus Christ as his savior amen he got he got back to the seat to the table it was the table that's in heaven now but he got back to the seat of the table I was able to share that with his mom and dad. Hey, look, I want to tell you something. He has a glorified body right now. Their parents come to our church. His brother comes to our church. His brother married one of our teenagers. They come to our church. But I want to tell you something right now. One of the reasons why Brianna sits in that, sits in that seat every morning, she has the prettiest smile in our youth group. You know what? She never left the table. A girl that works at Holland College, her name is Rita Ivy. Some of you might, she's a tall uh, black girl from Africa who works in the postal area. One time I was preaching at the Durham Rescue Mission. I don't know how this happened, but I'm going back with the, some teenagers that were singing. And uh, my phone rings. It's an it's a, um, upper room. It's a nurse from the hospital. And they tell me that Rita's father has collapsed and had a heart attack in a uh, shopping plaza. I need you, and they couldn't get a hold of Pastor Cox, so they somehow got my number. I need you to come to the hospital and tell Rita's father, uh, Rita's mother, that her husband has passed away. I am the youth pastor. Remember the guy on the other side of the table who goes, Hey, I need to tell you something. I'm going to go play foosball. Okay. <laughs> they called me. You know what I'm saying? I know you guys are. Okay. Because I, I am you. I'm just the older version who tells the other, my assistants to go be stupid. Okay. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I walked into the chapel of that building and, and uh, Mr. Kokobun, a guy who works with me, and we were, I, I, I have never had to do this. I just had, God, you've got to help me. God, you've got to help me. How am I going to tell this woman her husband is dead? He's not coming back. Back. He just went to get groceries. After explaining it to her, just bawling. I'll never forget. I'll never forget how, how much she cried. I had to go to the house, the apartment, and tell the children. We drove up to the apartment complex right across the street from the church, parked the van. I could hear them screaming. They're inside the house. I'm inside the van. I could hear them screaming. Somebody had called our house and said, I heard your dad passed away. Nobody had told them except for that. All, we were there most of the night. I mean, the teenage boy, Henry, just laying on the ground, mad, 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 mad. Can I tell you why Rita's still at Hawes Anderson College serving the Lord? Because she never left Amen. the table. Some of you are going through some things right now, and I know it's hard. Please, don't leave the table. Don't leave the table. Number two. Number two. When you don't understand, don't leave the table. Number two. When I can't see through the plan, don't leave the table. Can you imagine Joshua at Jericho? You want me to do what? What? You mean you want me to march around? You want me to get so close march around they can spit on me? Yeah, you want me to do what? You know, sometimes what God asks us to do doesn't make sense, does it? Like I said, I have twin daughters, right? They went, they, that means they're going to go to college at the same time. They're going to get married. I almost told them they're going to get married at the same time. You're in the morning. That way you can wear the dress. We have one big party. You get to wear the dress in the afternoon. That takes care of that. They said, Dad, that ain't going to work. Mom looked at me. Husband, that ain't going to work. I said, okay. You get married this year. We'll have time to recover. We'll sell the house. You get married that year. No. Okay. <laughs> It all worked out, okay? The Holy Spirit told me this. Listen to me. You'll think I'm crazy, but you can think what you want to, but I love sitting at the table, okay? The Holy Spirit told me, Randy, I want you to give more in your tithes and offerings. I was like, wait a minute. 
do you not did you not understand <laughs> okay that I, I need thousands of dollars right now for both of my daughters to go to Bible college at the same time they're going to get married Lord they're going to get married you, you know all of this you, you, yesterday day forever you're already looking you know it you know it and it's almost like he looks at me and goes yeah that's I know it so this is what I want you to do I want you to give when you don't have does that make sense to you yes or no well, some of you, because you're spiritual, you're going, yeah, uh -huh. you try. You, you won't be shaking your head. You try, okay? It doesn't make sense, does it? You know, in your Becca math, how many of you have it? Becca math? Doing Becca math? About the, how many of you don't care about math, okay? You know, you got a debit card. Who cares, okay? It's mommy's math, all right? In the Becca math, it does its mathematical problems in, in general math, and it shows offer, or ties and offering are always a part of their equations. And they use an example of someone who gave, okay, your tithes and offerings $400. And some of the kids are like, $400? And we were talking about this at the dinner table last night. Man, if I'm not going to tell you how much I tithe, but if I had my tithes and offerings on a monthly basis, I would not be driving a 2012 Toyota with 222, 422 miles on it. Amen? I'm not complaining because it would just keep on going. Right now, I'm driving a 2022 Honda Accord that belongs to my friend who said you can drive it when you go out of town. So why God provided, amen? I got my local car, and then I go buy his toy. I drive around in his toy. I ride his boat, play with his camper, go to his uh, beach house, and play with his car. Oh, amen? So God does provide. But what you have to do is you have to listen when you don't understand. You, how many of you are seniors? Raise your hand. How many of you are going to be seniors? Worst seniors. You fail. How many of you are seniors again? Raise your hand. Get them up there. Get them up there. Stick them up there. Raise your hand. Come, where are the seniors go? Y'all go to the restroom? Okay. All right, here we go. All right, you could be a junior. God is telling you right now what you're supposed to do. And you're looking at it and you're going, I don't understand that. I can't see your plan. Jamie, 30 years ago, God never saw you. Well, you did not see you here. Who knew you'd marry the pastor's daughter? It's the only reason why you got the job, bro. <laughs> the reason. I had to figure out the connection. Now I know. And uh, goodness gracious. Hey, don't leave when you don't understand the plan. Did it work out for Joshua? Yes, it did. Will it work out for you? Yes, it will. Number three. Listen to this. And this, this turns in a negative way. When I'm guided by my own hand. Most of the time when we leave the table, it's because we've been guided by our own hand. I mentioned earlier about the prodigal son. When he came to himself, he realized, he remembered the table. He remembered the table. I wonder how many people, I was preaching at the mission and there's a hundred men there. And I remember asking them, if your mom's still alive, she's somewhere. If your daddy's still alive, he's somewhere. If you're married, your wife is somewhere. If you have children, they are somewhere. Do you remember what it was like when you were there? One of the things that draws us back to God when we run away from God is remembering what God has said. How about Jonah? When God said no, go, Jonah said what? No. When God said go, Jonah said no. But eventually you find out that he comes back. You have a choice to make. You choose to leave and you can choose to return. But it's because sometimes, not because of God's plan, not because of what I don't understand, but it's because of my own hand. I make the decision to go do something. It's your choice. And it's your choice to return. I have in my notes right here, you, Randy, you. God told me at a youth conference in 1980 that he wanted me to come to Howells Anderson College and, and study. He wanted me to, he wanted to be a, a history major, a PE major, and that I am. I'm a secondary ed, a secondary ed degree. I, I don't play with that stuff anymore. You know, just I coach volleyball and hang out with teenagers, you know. But I got scared. I ran from God. It was of my own hand that I went to Florida right after I graduated. I was born in Central Florida, grew up in Central Virginia, and God now has me in Central North Carolina. I'll, hello, uh, let me get married and let me live in the South. Hey, man, sorry, guys. And, uh, you know, hey, whew. And uh, But I, uh, of my own hand, I ran from God just like Jonah because I was afraid. Some of you right now, you know there's something you're supposed to be doing, but you're just scared. God's told you what to do. You feel that prick on your heart. You hear that knocking at your door. You feel that hand on your shoulder. And God 
God's telling you right now, there is something you're supposed to be doing. Whether it's His will for where you're supposed to go, or if it's His will for what's in your life that is supposed to go. But God's telling you right now, and you're scared. You're scared to step out on faith. You're worried about what people are going to say. You're worried about where the money's going to come from, like I said earlier. So I went to Florida. I wasn't doing anything wrong, but I wasn't doing anything right. I wasn't where God wanted me to be. My mom calls me. Randy, this is what it says in my notes. When are you coming home? So what do you mean? Well, you've been gone for five weeks. When, when are you coming home? I said, well, I'm not doing anything wrong, Mom. This is me, the guy preaching to you. I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm just hanging out with Grandma and Grandpa. I love my grandparents, and I'll tell you more about that later. But uh, we're not doing anything wrong. He said, Randy, I want to tell you something. Your other grandmother has cancer, and... Uh, I don't think she's going to live very long. Okay. Okay. Time. Mom calls me again. Brandy, if you don't come home, if you don't come home, I'm a teenager at Gill Grove, just graduated from Grace Baptist Academy, and uh, if you don't come home, you'll never see your grandma alive again. Got on an Amtrak train. From Central Florida to Central, got off in Petersburg, Virginia. Got in the car with my mother, drove to the hospital. You know what the death rattle is? <laughs> that's air passing through the body. Usually that's happening right before somebody passes away. Stayed there, spent the night. My mom stayed in the room. I stepped out in the, in the visitor, whatever. Mom took me home to take a shower while I was in the shower. When I came out, my mom said, Hey, hey Randy, your grandma passed away. Grandma passed away. You know, kids, it was of my own hand that I went to Florida. But it was God's hand that got me back. It was God's hand. He used you. Did he use your grandma to do that? Yeah, he sure did. He turned my face around and reminded me of that wonderful table. Yeah. One last thing. One last thing. Actually, I'm lying. One last thing. One last thing. When I am thankful, my destiny is in his hands. Jesus, what an example. Not my will, but thine be done. I must be about my, what, father's business. Okay. Jesus said, I have come to seek, at 19, Luke 19.10, I've come to seek and to save that which is lost. What an example. Joseph, Joseph of all people, he was never, never questioned, but was always thankful for his seat at the table when he didn't understand, when he didn't see God's hand. Uh, I don't see too much of him making over a lot of mistakes of his own hand. But notice in Genesis chapter 50, verse number 20, but as for you, you thought it evil against me, but God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much or many or save people alive. It is God's hand. And we understand this is the will of God. May I ask you a couple of questions? What will you miss if you leave the table? If I never came back from Florida, I never would have met Jamie. Jamie would have never met his father-in-law. He never would have married his wife. I'm not saying this is all on me, but am I not telling the truth here? These two boys, would they have been here? Yes or no? I don't know. You'll miss your ministry. You'll miss what God has prepared for you when you leave the table. Who will you miss when you leave the table? I just said it. If I wouldn't have turned around and came back to the table and trusted the Lord. Man, I did not like going to Hiles Anderson College. It was too cold up there. But I made it through four years. I hated it when those leaves started to drop. I love the sunshine. Amen. I love the fact that North Carolina has beaches and mountains. I love that. I love that. You guys have to bring in sunlight out here. I mean, it's crazy. I haven't seen, I've seen hills but no mountains. And I don't think there's a beach anywhere unless it's some uh, pit that used to be here somewhere. I don't know. Filled with water. I have no idea. Okay? No beaches. All right? What will you miss? I'd have missed out on Amber and Ashley. I'd have missed out on Michelle. Greatest gift God's ever given to me other than the gift of salvation is my wife. I'd, I'd have missed out on all those kids. Why are you going to? I'd have missed out on 34 years of playing foosball with, with teenagers. <laughs> Lastly, this is a great study for you, and I'll go through it quickly and tell you one story, and we're out of here, and it's floating tacos. Okay? Romans chapter number 8. Look, look at, turn to Romans chapter number 8. I'm going to speed through some things that's at your table that you do not want to miss out on. Okay? Romans chapter number 8. 
I'll say the verses. You can look at them and listen all at the same time. I'll give you a, preface, a, a paraphrase of what it is saying, and you'll be able to see this. Number one, and most importantly, in Romans chapter, uh, Romans chapter 8, verse number 1, I want you to pick up on these words, and aren't you so thankful for them that it says there is no condemnation. Thank God I am free. Free, free from this world of sin. Amen. If you're, if you're excited about being saved this afternoon, somebody say amen. You really, hey, it bothers me, it bothers me, it bothers me. When people talk about heaven and Christian school teenagers and, and youth group teenagers sit there and go, yeah, yeah. hey folks, you ain't going to hell. Right. That's southern for you ain't going to hell. Right. That's southern for you ain't going to hell. Right. Y'all say ain't up here? Amen. You do every once in a while? That's right. You ain't going to hell. Thank God. That's at the table. That's why you got to get to it. If you're not saved today, you need to get saved and find your seat at the table. Having your seat at the table is like finding your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Yeah. Romans chapter 8, verse number 2 and verse number 12. You can glaze, look over them. But not only is there a payment provided, there's power that is present. There's power over sin. Aren't you so thankful that now you have the ability to just say no. They sang the song about saying yes. Now you have the opportunity to do so. Number three, you'll see that in Romans chapter 8, verse number 6, you'll see there is a prevailing peace that comes because there is the Holy Spirit control that you have in your life. Romans 8, chapter number, or verse number 15, there is a, a parent to the parentless. Praise God, I am a child of the King. I've been adopted. I am a joint heir with Jesus Christ. And when Daddy steps out and Mommy steps out, Jesus never steps out. God never steps out. Yeah. I want you to see number five. Priceless possession. In Romans chapter 8, 17, I have an inheritance. This world is not my home. I'm just a what? Passing through. I want you to notice also there's a plan that is perfect. Romans 8, 28. All things work together for good. I want you to notice this in verse 29. All of these things are working to do something very special, to conform, conform us to His image. I want you to recognize there's a, a personal proclamation at your table. Romans 8, 31. God is for you. Who can be against you? What a wonderful thing. You might be out of public school and you're thinking everybody's against you, but God is not. God is for you. That's at your table. Get to the seat. Verse number, or number eight, you'll see there's a pleading position in Romans 8, verse 30, 34. He is our advocate. There's a mediator between God and, and man, the man Christ Jesus. Aren't you glad tonight that when you your tears, God understands. Yeah. Your problems, God knows about. I want you to notice there's a, a passionate persuasion in Romans 8, 38 and 39. Nothing will separate us from the love of God. Yeah. The question tonight is this right here. For you, is it going to be a pink purse or is it going to be a $100 bill? Yeah, I was born when my mom was 16. My mom was 16 and I was born because she disobeyed her parents. My mom told, uh, my grandparents told my mother to not have association with that young man. She is in, going into the 10th grade. He is a senior at the Lake Wells High School in Lake Wells, Florida. My grandparents go to my mother and say to her, I will, they, we will build you anything you want. They had the ability to do that. We will we'll give you this and we'll give you that. And my mom, my mom got up from the table walked away. She walked away from Jesus serving. She walked away from goodness and mercy even though they didn't walk away from her. My mom very quickly understood why Grandma and Grandpa said that. My dad was not a good man. Not a good man. My mom turned around. Mercy got her on one side and goodness got her on the other. Yep. Brought her right on back. Amen. That seat was open and Jesus was standing there. Yep. Waiting for you. My dad was married five times. The last two times was the same woman because he remarried her so she so he she could bury him. In 1991, I think it was the year before I left Gill Grove to go to where I am now. The phone rang. It was my grandma. She said, "Randy, have you heard anything about your dad?" I said, "What's talking about, grandma?" She said, he's, he's really sick. So what do you mean really sick? Like, maybe he has AIDS. So, wait a minute. I heard that. 
somehow, and I believe it was by the hand of God, that I made some phone calls. I got his doctor in his garage. Not my dad's, the doctor's garage. And I said, sir, you don't know me. But the man you're seeing right now is my dad. My mom never allowed me to spend a night with my dad until after I graduated from high school. I was 18 years, 18 years old after they separated. And I got a chance to spend a night with my dad. I said, Doctor, I've heard this from my grandmother. I don't know if it's a rumor. I don't know what the deal is. And I know there's a, a patient, client, whatever that stuff is, where you can't tell me what's going on. The doctor said this to me. He said, Son, if I was you, I'd go see your dad. It was spring break at our Christian school. I drove from Fayetteville, North Carolina to, to uh, Waverly, Florida. I picked up the phone and said, Hey, Dad, how's it going? Okay. I said, uh, How are you doing? All right. I said, I'm going to be there. I'm coming to see you at your trailer in just a little while. He didn't know I was in Waverly, Florida. It's like a 25-minute drive to where his trailer was. I drove to the trailer and knocked on the door. Come in. He couldn't get up to answer the door. My dad was about my height. Height. He has this same head, this same face, these same teeth. Maybe 30 pounds more. Okay, stocky guy, played baseball, high school. When I walked into the trailer, he was hooked up to all kinds of things, skin and bones, and weighed 87 pounds. Still lying to me, because that's the way sin is. Still lying. I sat across from him. He's in that chair. I'm sitting there, and he's crying. He said, Randy, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I said, Dad, uh, we're not talking about me right now. I forgave you a long time ago because Jesus forgave me. I forgave you a long time ago. Right now, all I want you to know is you're going to, you're going to meet him soon. Probably August of that year, he passed away. You're going to see him soon. You have got to talk to him. You don't have to talk to me. You need to talk to him. His temperature got up some crazy whatever. While I'm in there, he gets rushed to the emergency room. I drive to the emergency room behind them. I remember them wheeling into the emergency room, and I reached down in his chair. And I'm, I'm not very big, but I picked him up and sit him on that bed, on that emergency room table, and I just realized how, how, how much he was gone. And kids, let me tell you this last part before you decide to leave the table. The last thing he said to me, the last thing he said to me in his presence was, Randy, would you tell the kids that the preacher was right? The preacher was right the whole time. The Bible, the Bible is right. The Bible was right the whole time. Amen. Satan had so blinded him and deceived him. The Bible was right. Yeah. I remember one time I was visiting with him and he had a four-wheel drive pickup truck and the Holy Spirit had so impressed me. Randy, you must know that your dad is saved. This was way before this, probably wife number three or something. You must find out if your dad is saved. You must find out if your dad is saved. And I dropped him off and I was driving the truck back to Grandma's house because I couldn't stay with him. I said, he noticed I was still sitting there. Like truck running, light shining, window rolled down. He yelled, he, came, he called to me from the bathroom window. It was the closest one to the truck. He said, Randy, what's the matter? I said, Dad, i got to ask you this. Do you know Jesus as your Savior? Are you saved? He began to cry and says, yes, Randy, I do. And in, in a sense, this is what he said. He said, but one day, I walked away from the table. Yeah. And kids, please, please, would you make a decision today that you won't do that? And if you have, would you let goodness and mercy take you back to your seat? If you've never accepted Christ as your Savior this afternoon, and you just got invited to come to this youth ministry, or this youth activity, in fact, you didn't know where you were going, you just got in the van. <laughs> you heard, watch them call it, we're going to be there in Floating Taco. You got in the van, weirdo. You just heard that. And all of a sudden, you're like, dude, who's the guy crying? You know, what's going on? <laughs> if you haven't accepted Christ today, today is the day of salvation. Nobody knows. 
nobody knows about tomorrow. Today is the day. If you began to, if you began to move your chair a little bit away from the table, and I implore you, get back underneath that table with your heads bowed and your eyes closed. I'm just going to ask you three questions. Brother Jamie has asked me to do the invitation. I'm just going to ask you three questions. Question number one. How many of you would say, Brother Randy, I do know I'm going to go to heaven. I know I've accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior. Would you raise your hand? Praise the Lord. No one's looking but Brother Jamie and your youth pastor. Youth pastors, please look. Okay. Okay, put your hands down. In the, same, in the same question thing, how many of you say, Brother Randy, I'm not sure. I am not sure. But I want to make sure that I'm going to go to heaven someday. I want my seat at the table. Nobody's looking but me and the, and the youth people. Would you raise your hand? Would you, would you please pray for me? I want to be sure. Anybody like that? Question number two. How many of you this afternoon have contemplated and you know the temptation of leaving your table. There's some things in your life right now that's drawing you away from goodness and mercy and from Jesus who is waiting on you. How many say, Brother Andy, the Holy Spirit spoke to me about something tonight. Would you pray for me? Would you pray for me? Anybody like that? Come on, be honest with God. Anybody like that? God spoke to my heart about something that's, that's not on the table that's going to get me away from the table. Anybody like that? You know the Holy Spirit is telling you right now. I'm not trying to make you do anything. It's the Holy Spirit that's talking to you right now. And lastly, how many of you know of someone that used to be with you? You know right now someone in your family, someone in your church, someone in your school, or someone uh, in your community that used to be at the table, but they walked away from God. Would you raise your hand? You know of somebody. All of us do. That's one of the things about being a youth pastor. We watch them come and we watch them go and it hurts so much. When the piano begins to play, I'm going to ask you to do this. The youth pastor, how he wants this done. I mean, if the God has spoken to you, I want you to come and I want you to do business with the, with the Holy Spirit and God himself. Maybe, maybe you can come and thank God for the table that's been spread for you. Maybe you can thank God for the fact that he's serving it. Maybe you can thank God for the people that's in your family and life that's trying to help you right now. Maybe God's convicted your heart about something. Or I want you to come and pray for that person and uh, let them know their seat is still available. You can come and then as you pray individually, youth pastor, if you want to collectively meet with your group somewhere and, and thinking, you don't have to name names or whatever, but just as you see your young people come and move, you come and pray for the instruments play. Father, would you please right now do something special and we will definitely give you the glory for it. Please, God, help us.
heads bowed and eyes closed. Nobody looking around. You guys can be seated. That's fine. There's still people praying. With heads bowed and eyes closed. Nobody looking around. Maybe somebody's here thinking about someone that you know that used to come to youth rallies, but they've left the table. And maybe there would be a way that you can interact in that family's life, that young person. Uh, maybe you could use this time to pray for that one and ask the Lord to lead you and how you can be a help. This was a great message tonight. Definitely what we needed. If the Lord's not done, the altar's still open. Maybe some of you are fast. Maybe the Lord's still not done. Feel free to come back to the altar. We're in no hurry. We sing that that song there. I have decided to follow Jesus. Sing out with me. Sing out with it as a prayer to the Lord. Staying at the table, folks. Let's stay at the table. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. Amen. If that was a great message, say amen. Yeah. Man, that was wonderful, Brother Randy. Appreciate your heart. And uh, just appreciate this man and how the Lord continues to use him in my life. And then being able to come here, just appreciate you again taking that 10-hour plus trip uh, to be here. And uh, just appreciate his ministry and uh, all that he's done. So again, thank you for coming today. Let me give you some instructions again before we kind of change the mood here. But if God's still stirring in your heart, uh, let's not push the button on that and, dis and just dismiss. The Lord's still working on you. You need to chat with somebody. You need to chat with one of your, your youth leaders. Let's stay up here in the auditorium. We'll keep the auditorium quiet. And there's something else you need to deal with. Hey, let's get that taken care of today. Uh, let's get that done. Let's, the most important part is what we're doing here. And so we want to thank you for that. You know what? We're taking up an offering. Uh, everything that we take in is going to go to Brother Randy. Again, you may not be prepared for that. That's totally fine. Uh, but if you want to be a blessing uh, to Brother uh, Randy and, and his wife, Michelle, uh, so you can certainly do that. I tell you what, men, you guys could go ahead and come. And you've got a song picked out. So we can play there. Uh, that'd be great. Uh, but we'll go ahead and have a quick word of prayer for that, and then uh, and then we'll give you some instructions on what's coming up next. Brother Mike, thank you for being here today and being helper for our scavenger game. You'll be our scavenger man. <laughs> Could you? To, I'll pray for the offering. Come on, Father, Lord, thank you for this day, and Lord, again, we thank you for this message that we just heard, Lord. And, uh, thank you again for Brother Rugg, uh, young Lord, and just yes. the willingness, Lord, to serve. And, uh, Lord, as, as one that did get up from the table, Lord, I just thank you that yep. uh, you always have that table up, Lord. And, yep. Always come back. And just thank you, Lord, for who you are and uh, for loving us. Lord. We're not lovable people, Lord, but you love us in spite of us. And uh, just thank you for everything that you do for us and for who you are. Uh, Lord, we just ask somebody to take this offering, Lord, and bless it. And uh, you send me, Brother Gilman's name, Lord, and we just ask these things in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
do a couple more tickets. Got some tickets out there. Hey, Amen. We got some prizes still left. I, need, I got a few watch McCallits left. Uh, let's see here. Maybe we can get something home. Get some more sweets in you. 641-523. Come on up. Come on up. Come on up. Five, two, we'll just do a couple more here real quick. 641-477. We have 477. Thank you, sir. Have 477. Cool deal. Amen. All right, let's see. Next one is 641550. Don't you hate it when it's real close to your number? We've got a 550 back there. Oh, there's somebody. Let me stir these up for a while here. Stir them up real good. Let's see. 641564. 564? Come on now. <laughs> That's close. 564? We got it, got it right here? They had to look at the number. 564, good deal? Oh, let's see. We need to do a couple more, don't we? Yeah. And 64. Oh, 555. Five. I got the 555. Five, five. Right over here. That's a great number. That's yours. You can pick up anything off the table there. And let's see what else. All right, these are the last two right here. Here, you got two chances to win. Last three, 518. Do we have a 518? 518 right here. How about 522? And right here. Great job. Oh, sisters, great job. Okay, great. I tell you what, a couple things that uh, for the sake of our dismissal here uh, for the food, this team won, right? So this team, so you guys get to go first. And what a great blessing that is to go down. So I tell you what, so uh, those that, uh, so if you get, you've got some on this side, you guys go first. You're going to use this. Oh, look. <laughs> He changed teams. You're going to go down this staircase down on this side. Most of you know, probably done before, go down this staircase. When you get downstairs, there's two tables. Pastor, I'm going to have you pray to dismiss us. Can you do that? Can you come on up? When you go downstairs, there'll be two tables. You'll go down both ways, and then there'll be one table with drinks. In the middle classroom downstairs is all the desserts. That's where I'll be. There's fruity pebble treats again. Yes. yes. Love those. Okay. Cookies, brownies, all the other stuff. But fruity pebble treats, those are great. Okay. And so let's see. What else? I think that's the only thing. Anything else I'm missing? Is that it? Okay. And then have fun and enjoy your food and stay as long as you like until we kick you out, which will be a long time. So you can stay a long time. Again, thank you so much for coming. Thank you, Brother Randy. If you guys want to chat, come by and check with him. Young men, young, uh, men and ladies, get him to sign your Bible. Do you do that? You don't charge, do you? Oh, he doesn't charge. Praise the Lord. So you can come by, chat with him. He'd love to sign your Bible, I'm sure. Let's all stand, and uh, and we'll be dismissed in prayer. Thank you, Pastor Kent, for letting us have our youth rally, and you dismiss us in prayer. Let's pray. Father, we do thank you, Lord, for what a good God you are. Thank you, Lord, for the decisions that were made here today. And, Lord, this is all about just to recharge all of the young people and get them ready for school. And, Lord, ultimately to stand for Jesus, Lord, in this very wicked day that we live. And so, Lord, just embolden them to, uh, to live for you and to stand for Jesus, uh, Lord, to encourage one another. We thank you, Lord, for, again, the safety for the yeomans traveling. We pray now, Lord, there's a lot of folks that uh, went in to prepare, uh, Lord, uh, for the, the food. And, the, uh, Lord, it was prepared, and the ladies made all and baked all the cookies and all the different treats. And so, Lord, just pray that you'd bless and bless the fellowship. And, Lord, again, if there's one here, Lord, perhaps others that just still really need to uh, finish. Uh, Lord, we just pray that they would get things taken care of before they leave this place. Dismiss us now with your blessing. We pray in Jesus' name, for his name's sake. Amen. All right, the piano side, you are dismissed.